I'm Sarah Levine. I'm the author of Bone by Bone Comparing Animal Skeletons, which is illustrated by T.S. Spooky Tooth. And I'm going to be reading this book with permission from my publisher, Milbrick Lerner. And um, but before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit about why I wrote this book and um, how we are similar to animals. So here's what most people don't realize. Here is a bone. That's a human bone. I'm going to hold it up. You might want to guess what kind of bone it is. Is it an arm bone? Is it a leg bone? This is actually a femur. So this bone would go like this. If it was in my body, actually it would go like this. And you see this ball here? This goes into the hip. So a person walks like this. Now I'm going to show you that animals have basically exactly the same bones. So here is a really, really tiny bone. This is a mouse bone. And if we can focus the camera up very closely, you can see it has the same ball, just like that, just like the femur of the human bone. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. Uh, let's pretend that we're in a group where I'm gonna do Simon Says and I'm gonna teach you your bones. So wiggle your phalanges. Simon Says wiggle your phalanges. Simon Says put your hands on your skull. Simon Says put your hands on your ribs. Simon Says put your hands on your humerus. Put your hands on your skull. Were you out? Because I didn't say Simon Says. That probably just works in a group, but I'm being silly. Okay, so we have the same bones in our body. Now what I want you to imagine is what kind of animal you would be if you had a skull and if you had vertebrae. Vertebrae go all the way down your back to make your backbone. And you have ribs, but you had no arm bones and no leg bones. So think about that. And if you were here, I would say, do you want to guess the answer? And we'd go one, two, three. So guess the answer. The answer is a snake. Here's a snake. See, this snake has a skull, and it has vertebrae, and it has ribs. Okay, I'm going to ask you another one. What kind of animal would you be if you had finger bones, but instead of stopping here, they went all the way down to the ground, and you could maybe move them like this and maybe fly with them? Take a guess. The answer is a bat. Here's a picture of a bat skeleton. You can see there's the arm bones and the finger bones are really, really long. Can you focus that? Okay, so since animals and people have the same bones and people didn't really realize that, and I thought it would make a fun book and a fun guessing game, I went ahead and wrote it. So I'm gonna read that to you now. Okay, so in this book, there are gonna be questions and answers just like the ones we just did. So you can go ahead and guess if you'd like. And at the end, I'll show you some of the other bones. Okay, when you write a book, you get to say who it's dedicated to. This is to Dorothy, my daughter, who's filming this. Okay, Bone by Bone, Comparing Animal Skeletons by Sarah Levine, illustrated by T.S. Spooky Tooth. Have you ever wondered what we would look like if we didn't have any bones? It wouldn't be pretty. Luckily, we don't have that problem. We're vertebrates, animals with bones. Our bones hold us up. Vertebrates come in different shapes and sizes, but we have many of the same bones. All vertebrates have skulls and ribs, and we all have vertebrae. Vertebrae stack up one on top of the other to make the spine or the backbone. Can you imagine how you'd look if we added some bones to your spine? What if your vertebrae didn't stop at your rear end? What if they kept going and going and going? What would you have? You'd have a tail. Tails are made of vertebrae. Lots of animals have tails. They wag on happy dogs and sweep side to side to help alligators swim through the water. What would happen if we took away some bones? What if you didn't have any arm bones or leg bones? What kind of animal would you be if you had just a skull and vertebrae and ribs? Now you can guess if you want. The answer is a snake. Snakes don't have arm bones because they don't, arm bones or leg bones because they don't have any arms or legs. Here's the next one. What kind of animal would you be if we took away your leg bones but kept your arm bones? Here's a hint. We'd also move your breathing hole from the front of your face to the top of your head. This is a tricky one. Most people don't get this one, but think about maybe you'll get it. The answer is a whale or a dolphin. These animals don't have legs. Their arm bones and finger bones are flippers. The holes in the top of their skull are blowholes. Blowholes let them breathe air easily as they swim. And now I'm gonna show you a skull. We're gonna take a pause. Okay, here's a regular animal skull. This is a dog. 
You can see its breathing hole is here. So if it's swimming in the water, it would need to keep its head above the water like that. And here is a dolphin skull. I'm gonna tip it down. You can see it's kind of hard to find where the nose is. This is where it breathes. This is the breathing hole. I'm sticking my fingers inside. So let's imagine that the dolphin is swimming underwater. Here, hold your breath, it's swimming underwater, and now it's gonna rise up, take a breath, so it can take a breath when it's above the water. Okay, hold your breath, swimming, 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 now take a breath. There it goes. Okay. Okay, now we're doing this one. What would happen if your middle fingers and middle toes were so thick that they supported your whole body? What kind of animal would you be if these bones were so strong that you didn't need any other hand or foot bones? Go ahead and guess. A horse or a donkey or a zebra. These animals have only one toe on each leg. Instead of fingernails and toenails, they have hooves. What kind of animal would you be if you had only two fingers on each hand and two toes on each foot? There's a lot of answers to this one a goat or a sheep or a moose or a deer or a pig or a cow, and lots of other ones. Since these animals walk on two toenails, their hoofs are called split hoofs. Now let's keep all of your bones but change the size of some of them. What kind of animal would you be if you had really big vertebrae in your neck? Go ahead and guess. A giraffe. Both humans and giraffes have seven vertebrae in their necks, but giraffe vertebrae are enormous. Each vertebrae can be more than 10 inches long. That's about as big as your head. All right, I have a vertebrae right here from a giraffe. Here it is. I'm gonna hold it up, and I'll hold it this way so you can see the hole that goes through it. And here's some human vertebrae. That's oh, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> They're a lot smaller. There's some vertebrae. Um, okay, so I'm gonna hold it up. Do you think it's gonna be bigger or smaller than my head? What do you think? Maybe a little bigger? if your leg bones were much longer than your arm bones and you use them for jumping. A rabbit or a kangaroo. These animals need strong hind leg bones for jumping. What kind of animal would you be if your finger bones grew so long that they reached your feet? I bet you know the answer to that one. A bat. A bat's wings are made of finger bones. A web of skin connects the bones to make wings so that a bat can fly. What if we took away all your bones? Could you be an animal if you didn't have any bones at all? Yes. Many animals don't have bones. They're called invertebrates. Clams, beetles, and starfish have no bones. They have their hard parts on the outside. Worms and slugs don't have bones. Their bodies are soft and mushy. Jellyfish don't have bones either. In fact, their bodies are so fragile they would collapse if they didn't live in water. But let's add the bones back in one more time. What kind of animal would you be if you could turn this page? Go ahead and guess. A human. The bones in our hands look a lot like the bones many other animals have, but we can move our thumbs in a special way that allows us to do many things, including turning the pages of a book. Our special thumbs are called opposable thumbs. Opposable thumbs are one of the things that make us human. All right, hold your hand up like this. Take your thumb and touch your pinky. Can you do that? And now touch the next finger, then the next finger, and the next finger. If you can do that, that means you have opposable thumbs. Just like apes and monkeys, some animals like raccoons and possums, they can go like this, but they can't touch all their fingers, so they don't really have opposable thumbs, just a little bit. Okay, did you get that one? If so, give yourself a thumbs up, like that. Okay, I'm gonna show you a couple skulls just for fun, if you wanna guess what they are. And if you wanna learn more about teeth, or about dinosaur bones. I wrote two other books, which maybe I'll read online. There's the dinosaur one. There's a tooth one. And here's some skulls. I'm gonna hold it up and give you a moment to guess if you wanna guess. Here, let's just move over here, Dorothy. Okay, here's one. What do you think that one is? That one's an alligator. And how about this one right here? You see the little teeth? You can use that these teeth for getting, oh boy, 
liking. <laughs> we should stop it. <laughs> Let's stop it.